Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Josh Ellsworth coming to you live out from Uniontown, Pennsylvania. And we're excited to be broadcasting to the Stalls and Transfer Express Facebook pages, as well as the Stalls TV uh, YouTube page live. So I broadcast every other Tuesday and Thursday. And then Jenna and Kelly now from our team uh, handle uh, the other week. And uh, today I'm excited to uh, have kind of a casual session. I have one project plan that I want to talk to you about. Uh, had some questions submitted in advance, uh, but today is all about uh, getting your questions answered. So it's a Q&A session. I'll be live with you for about 45 minutes or so uh, today. So if you have questions on anything, about your apparel decorating business. Specifically, heat transfer is where my expertise is. Uh, you can ask them. So whether that is how to uh, instruction, very specific questions about Stahl's products I'm happy to help with. Um, also business uh, related topics, uh, sales strategy, marketing strategy, uh, any of those things. Uh, we have 45 minutes together today. So I'm excited to keep this one casual and uh, navigate throughout. So as you think of those uh, burning questions, make sure that you uh, say hello where you're watching from. It's good to see you, Dimitri, from Minneapolis. Um, also good to see some folks joining today from Canada and April from Texas. We'll make sure we shout out uh, who you are and where you're watching from. And uh, typically we have viewers from all around the world. And so we're excited to be able to continue to broadcast live for a long time, but certainly since the start of COVID uh, with our Making It Together sessions, which still have record views, uh, even in their recorded form on our Facebook page and YouTube pages. And so that's one thing we're seeing in the market is there are more people than ever um, out there looking to start a business, grow a business, really uh, make money uh, from their home uh, with the heat press or from their business with the heat press. And uh, we've, we've been able to uh, come out with some pretty well-timed uh, releases and technology. Uh, if you haven't seen it, some of those things that you wanna look at are ultra color soft. Uh, this is a digital screen printed transfer that simplifies the life of a heat printer, allowing you to nearly use one product for, for just about everything, as long as you have 20 pieces or more uh, in the particular logo. And another one that continues to ship out every day uh, to people, believe me, because we're seeing photos on Facebook uh, of you guys receiving them is the 360 IQ hat press, which completely has revolutionized uh, headwear decorating. I watched a video actually this morning from a contract decorator that received this machine. It was kind of showing what it does uh, for dimensional logos and heat transfer vinyl. It was just great to see uh, people receiving this machine, having success with it. Uh, for those of you that are having challenges with it, we stand by ready to help. I know I've personally FaceTimed with folks to, to get them accustomed to the loading techniques and how to heat apply properly. And we are working to update uh, settings and, and everything uh, as this is new technology and we're working to get out there in front. So want to thank you all for joining. And yeah, so I see that's going to be my next big purchase uh, from somebody from The Shield. So make sure you get in line because we are still on uh, pre-order mode. Um, I shouldn't say pre-order. It's just a long turn time. We're shipping them every day and we've actually increased our manufacturing capacity over the last two weeks to be able to respond to the demand uh, on this machine specifically, but also heat presses in general. Uh, we're just seeing more people than ever uh, investing in heat presses and, and even bigger and better heat presses to make it uh, more professional. So a couple things I want to cover today as the questions are coming in. And uh, I'm just going to share my screen with you real quick. This is just some uh, brief news from around the stalls world to make sure you didn't miss any uh, recent product additions because they can be easy to miss uh, with all the news coming out. Uh, CAD Cut Ultra Weed, uh, you've probably heard about it. This is our made in the USA heat transfer vinyl product. We like to position it as your new go-to vinyl. It's certainly the heat transfer vinyl of our future here at Stalls. And we're seeing sales tick up in it and we are constantly adding colors. So in case you missed it, if you go to ultraweed on stalls.com, we've added uh, Kelly, pale yellow, pumpkin, which is um, a nice orange shade, matches the fashion film orange and Vegas gold. And so really that starts to round out our lineup. We still have some other color additions planned over the next uh, few months. Uh, and again, this is U.S. manufactured, so we should be able to respond to trends a lot quicker um, and give you uh, the colors you need when you need them um, on time. And one thing I want to point out, if you've never tried our heat transfer vinyl, we have this satisfaction guarantee going where you can try a one yard cut for $9.99. And uh, if you don't like it, we'll give you your money back. 
And so that's something to take a look at. Uh, we're not going to refund you for 150 yards if you buy that, but try a yard first. Uh, if you don't like it for whatever reason, we'll give you your money back as simple as that. We're really confident in this product and the reviews continue uh, to come in. And so we're excited for that. A couple other things I want to point out, if you're in case you're not familiar, uh, Stalls does offer a free online designer uh, called cadworkslive.com. That's C-A-D. W O R X live.com and we'll share the link out. Um, but you'll also see that there are over 2 million designs and counting um, in this particular uh, software of people that are creating and saving. So uh, we have over 75,000 folks that are depending on CADWorks for their business. If you are looking to get into vinyl cutting, you need a design software that's a little bit better than what comes with the machine, but you don't want to learn Corel or Illustrator. Uh, CADWorks is a free tool that we give you uh, to help you grow your business. Uh, one other thing that I want to cover is uh, Stalls TV. I know I'm broadcasting there for many of you, but we have our Stalls TV YouTube channel where uh, we're pretty excited. We hit a milestone um, earlier this month where we've uh, just inside of five years since we've launched uh, Stalls TV, we've eclipsed 10 million uh, video views. And these are typically businesses watching the videos. So that's uh, pretty substantial for us uh, with over a million uh, over the of those views coming since March of this year. So that just shows you the hunger for content and we're publishing more content than ever uh, right now, but the interest is there and we're excited to celebrate five years of Stalls TV. We've all been doing videos a lot longer than that, but five years of officially uh, the Stalls TV YouTube channel and the success and hopefully it's uh, helping you to grow your business. So um, some questions uh, coming in. Uh, that I want to handle right off the bat. And then I have some other examples and photos I want to uh, show you that I've pulled from some recent work that's been done uh, out there and shared to our Facebook page. And so one question uh, coming in already, let's see, let's pick one here. Bobby asked, can I print on regular HTV rolls from my inkjet printer? Okay. And so just to cover that, and it kind of ties in with uh, what I'm going to show you for my demo here today. Let me grab the roll. Pretty long piece here. I printed a big run, but you may have seen a video I shared not too long ago. This is a material that starts as a white heat transfer vinyl. You can see on this side where it's weeded out, um, but it can be printed on. Okay. Um, this particular uh, product, which I'll go into more detail here in a moment, was printed on a solvent uh, or eco-solvent printer or even a latex printer. So it's sold in the roll. We call it our CAD color line of printable heat transfer vinyl. And really what I see for a business that's in regular heat transfer vinyl, at some point you're going to get to uh, a number of colors in a job where you're going to want to move to a print cut workflow. And so the natural expansion to that is a solvent or eco solvent printer cutter. Uh, we distribute the Roland brand. It's called the Versicam and there's uh, several different units to select from. Uh, but this is really what gives you durability um, in a print cut vinyl. Uh, there really isn't a vinyl that I know of that is highly durable that's designed for a desktop inkjet printer. Um, because typically those are inks that just aren't very durable in the wash. And so while you can buy transfer paper, um, and we have a website, you may not know about it, called transferpaperexperts.com that sells uh, inkjet uh, paper as well as sublimation paper and laser paper. Um, it's a good uh, technique, but it's just not going to be as durable for business uh, as you're going to get out of a print cut machine. So uh, my quick answer would be is there really isn't a vinyl, so to speak, that can be put through a desktop inkjet printer, um, in this case, Bobby, but there are printable uh, rolls of vinyl that if you invest in a higher quality printer that's solvent, eco-solvent, latex, you're gonna be able to create extremely professional results with. And again, where that comes into play, you might imagine photo quality, color gradients, and those sorts of things, uh, for sure, and effects and textures, but really even on three plus color designs, it makes sense to move to a print cut workflow. So. The good news is if you don't have the ability to invest in that today, a unit starts around, I'd say about 10 grand is a good 
uh, ballpark estimate, and, and it'll do a lot more than just uh, heat transfers. It'll do uh, decals, wall graphics, banners, et cetera. It's a great investment, uh, an all-purpose machine for, for a business. But if you don't have the, the money to invest in that today, we offer something at stalls called CAD prints, which basically is a transfer that's printed on that same machine. You just upload your logo to us, and we send it to you, and it uh, comes ready to heat apply. And so of course you're gonna pay a little more for us to print it for you versus what you could print yourself, but there's an option for you to get these durable results for your full color, multicolor uh, logo. So hopefully that helps you. And again, we'll talk about uh, that here in a moment. Um, so uh, Sharon signed up on the early list for the 360 hat press. When do you think uh, you'll be contacted? So um, we are uh, working through this list pretty rapidly, so much so that our turn time once ballooned to three and a half months is now down to 60 days. And I actually expect new machines to, to ship more in the 45 day period. Um, we're still pulling out of the back orders, but Sharon, I'll make sure I look at um, the list uh, when I'm offline here and figure out where you are in line. But just know that our team is, is following it in order. They're calling people like this week for machines to ship next week to get the credit card payment, et, et cetera. And so if you guys want on that list, we'll share the link on how to get on that order and read more about the press. Uh, certainly you can go on our YouTube channel and search for videos. Um, another question comes in, uh, does stalls offer a plastisol transfer? Um, and the answer is yes. Our uh, transfer express division um, is probably the largest screen print transfer supplier uh, in the US uh, in plastisol transfers. So uh, we have a separate division for that. It's transferexpress.com. And um, you can, they have an online designer where you can create within or you can upload your own artwork and we can produce a plastisol transfer. I'm gonna get into some more specific questions that came in in advance about plastisol transfers here in a moment. But if you're looking to start um, goof proof, uh, G-O-O-F proof is our uh, number one ink formula for plastisol transfers for t-shirts. And we certainly have other options for performance wear and whatnot. But yes, transferexpress.com would be the way uh, to go. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. Okay, so I think this is a good one. Uh, Gina's on the wait list for the 360. Hey, Gina, good to see you. If you've never uh, listened to our podcast, I actually had Gina on as a guest, one of our first podcasts that we did, which is the Heat Press for Profit podcast. So wherever you listen to uh, podcasts, make sure you look that up. There's about 12 episodes that have been published, and we actually just got featured as one of the top 10 podcasts in the apparel decorating uh, industry, which was really exciting for us. And we'll be doing more of those podcasts as we head into the uh, fall, winter and picking it back up. All right, I like this question. Uh, we have a newbie here that's new to, new to heat press. And this is a common question even for experts. So I think it's relevant. Uh, it's the last part of the comment here is, what can you use to make printed t-shirts where you don't feel the print on the shirt? Because that's really what a lot of folks desire. Either you wanna be very specific about what it feels like because you're looking for the texture and the finish that it offers, like a rubbery finish or a flocking or whatever it might be. Or sometimes you're looking for the most super soft result uh, that you can get. And what I'll say is that that no feel uh, is different to everybody. If you truly mean no feel, like can't touch it, feel anything, I believe there's only one way to get that. And it's through a process called dye sublimation, where you are at the ink is actually dyeing uh, the fibers of the garment. However, dye sublimation doesn't work on just any fabric or any color of fabric, which is why you can't get the no feel on every garment. So if you happen to have a garment that's at least 65% polyester and it's a light color, preferably white or, or very close to white, like a cream, then you can invest in a dye sublimation printer, print your own designs, as many colors as you want. You just print ink on paper and you can transfer that uh, to these uh, special garments that are at least 65% poly and also um, that are white or light color, right? It, it actually, the how the chemistry works, the polyester fibers open up when it's heated up to a really high temperature, like 380 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then the ink changes from a solid state printed on the paper to a gas. And it actually gets inside of the fiber itself. And then once the pre heat press is open and the garment cools, the fibers close up, it traps the ink and you get the image. So you're actually dyeing the fibers of the garment. And so it's a zero feel decoration technique. 
However, uh, if you're like most businesses, people are going to want black t-shirts, navy t-shirts, red t-shirts, royal blue t-shirts, green t-shirts, right? Or just a t-shirt, sometimes 100% cotton ring spun t-shirt versus a polyester. So we have to start to peel back other decoration methods to get the, the lowest, um, the lightest weight feel on those garments. And so what I would like to say is every print technique has an option for a lightweight feel. For instance, you can get a heat transfer vinyl that feels really good on the garment. Our best feeling is premium plus, soft, stretchable, very lightweight. Can definitely feel it, but if you rubbed your hand over the garment, you wouldn't feel too much of it. I, I think that many people position that as high end. You can print with direct-to-garment uh, printers and get a very lightweight feel, but you can also print designs on a direct-to-garment printer um, with the white underbase with a heavy coverage area that you can definitely feel. And so um, I would say that if you're looking for the lightest way feel I would, uh, from a heat printed product other than sublimation, I would go to Premium Plus, which is a specific brand of heat transfer vinyl. And in the Transfer Express lineup, I would go to their ink formula called Hot Split. Okay, we just talked about Plastisol transfers. One version of Plastisol transfers sold at Transfer Express is called Hot Split. If you haven't used that before, it's, it's really cool uh, because it doesn't have like technically the adhesive, the powdered adhesive on it. So you don't get that weight of the powdered adhesive. You really just get the Plastisol ink on the garment and it feels great. Now, as with anything, there's trade-off because you're not getting that opaque agent um, that adhesive agent. So you're getting a little bit more of blend of the ink to the shirt. But when I shop in retail, it's sort of the, the fashion forward shirts. You're almost always seeing a little bit of show through on the garment uh, with the direct screen printing that's done there. So I think that hot split is a great alternative for those retail ready looks where typically you're after that no hand effect. So those are a couple choices we could spend all day uh, talking about what you don't feel on a shirt, but look at hot split for plastisol transfers look at Premium Plus and uh, examine sublimation and what you can do with that. All right, here we go, some more questions. Um, uh, more of a technical issue. Um, I'm definitely not a technician, but I do have some experience with the machine, so I'm gonna pull this one up. Um, my auto clam may not stay closed, so I wanna use this opportunity to just say, uh, we do have a 1-800 number for the Hotronics heat presses. This is an auto clam uh, beside me that I own um, where it's 24-7, 365 days that you can call in and get tech support. Those are going to be the guys and the ladies that are going to be able to diagnose the issues because they handle potential issues all day. And they're the same folks that build the machines in our factory, actually just about 15 miles uh, down the road from me. Um, some things that I would say, giving my experience, which isn't much on the technical uh, detailed aspects of the machine would be uh, make sure you clean the magnet. Um, there's also a part of the press that triggers the control board and the, the locking mechanism on the back of the press. I'm pointing and you can't see it here. So there's this little part that helps to engage here. Make sure this part isn't bent and that it's coming into close proximity with the back of the machine. But when you lock the machine down, you should hold it down and that magnet should engage. That helps the magnet to engage to make sure it's not bent um, and make sure you have a clean magnet and a clean top area above the magnet where it's engaging. If it's beyond that, um, they're probably gonna have to walk you through there, maybe a loose uh, cable or something. Usually they can diagnose everything through the phone and as you might imagine, they have videos to help with everything. So hopefully that, that helps you out. Call them up, it's 1-800-727-8520 is the Hotronics tech support line always open. Um, do we offer sample packs of the UltraWeed? Right now, um, we do have a sample pack of the UltraWeed. Let me pull that up real quick. See if I can find it. I'm gonna bring you back here in a second. Here we go. All right, so if you go to the UltraWeed section of the uh, webpage, you'll be able to click on uh, order samples. Uh, again, the other thing you can do is buy the one yard cut for $9.99 and it's the guarantee. That way you can pick a color you like and maybe use for a job. But if you want to order samples, you can click the link order samples. Um, we call these our DIY samples, which basically means you get a sheet of the vinyl uh, to actually try. And they're five bucks and Ultra Weed is one of the selections where you'll get a small sheet of the vinyl. You'll also get an applied sample of the Ultra Weed and a uh, marketing brochure. Um, so you can check out everything about it, but definitely offer samples. 
um, for the Ultra Weed product. All right, so lots of questions coming in. I appreciate you guys uh, keeping this show fun and active here. Uh, let's see. Love the Ultra Weed. Got one of those. Love that it's USA made. Yeah, and it's actually uh, Berry Amendment Compliant, B E R R Y. And so something I'm just learning about, but the Department of Defense and other industries sometimes require products that be used uh, to decorate their apparel that are Berry Amendment Compliant, meaning fully manufactured in the US. Um, and this is a product that is. So it may open up some opportunities for you to go and target specific uh, niche markets, um, large markets, but certainly specific markets uh, with the product. All right, when am I making a video on Permatwill? Um, I guess soon now, right? So let me uh, grab one of my note cards where I keep all my things I have to do for the week. And uh, I'll write video of Permatwill on, but I will talk about Permatwill. And actually, I'm going to use this opportunity to show a look here that one of our friends out on Facebook is always sharing projects that they come up with. So I'm going to show his work for a second just to explain this concept. So this isn't Permatwill, um, but this is a concept of using a fabric base. So if you look at this job, and I think uh, just so creative here, um, this is a specialty fabric to Tommy. I'm not even sure how to say that, um, that is backed, uh, that he is backing with adhesive uh, to make it possible to do a patch like this, right? And the thing with the patch, and it's the white layer, and then on top of it, you see the red and the blue flocking. Um, I did a video gosh, I want to say it was back in 2008 on YouTube. If you want a good laugh, look it up. I have nice big sideburns and it's from way back in the day. Uh, it was called uh, Tackle Twill Without Stitches, right? Because one of the big challenges with uh, twill-based products is when you are decorating with them, if you're not laser cutting them, if you're just knife cutting them um, and you don't seal the edge of the twill, you can get potential fraying in the wash if it's not sewn, right? And sometimes people just want to heat apply twill. So if you just want to heat apply twill and you have a laser cutter, you can buy the perma twill, you can laser cut it, and you can heat apply it uh, without issue. Perma twill means permanent adhesive twill. That means when it's pressed, it's going to stay. Okay. Um, however, if you don't have um, a laser cutter, um, this is a cool technique that's shown here. Uh, where he has actually used the flocking material to encapsulate the edge of the fabric or the twill could be any product here. So you can see um, the twill is the base layer and the flock is grabbing some of the fabric and grabbing some of the garment, in this case, a hat. So that is a really effective way to take a product like perma twill that can be knife cut um, and seal the edge so it doesn't come off. And I think it creates a really cool look. So it's almost like a... Um, a reverse layering where it's trapping that. So very creative use. I, I love this look. Um, and so I wanted to make sure I pulled that up front and showed you this creative work. And uh, maybe it's something that you can implement in your shop. But certainly we'll talk more about twill options. There are uh, three basic twills that are sold by stalls. There is just standard poly twill. There is pressure sensitive twill. And there is perma twill. And so just quickly to explain the differences between those three, which you can buy by the roll. And there's one more style that we cut for you, but um, those three that you buy by the roll, the poly twill is just the basic polyester twill with a temporary adhesive that you buy in a roll. The pressure sensitive twill actually has a sticky pressure sensitive backing, which is great, um, particularly for doing multicolor designs. Um, but one thing I like about our pressure sensitive tool, it actually comes with a backing on it, uh, a plastic liner similar to how you buy heat transfer vinyl. So you can load that and cut that on your vinyl cutter and have something to hold it stable if you're not using a, a craft cutter and using a cutting mat anyways, right? It holds the design together. Um, and then the perma twill, again, it comes loose without the backing. It's just a permanent adhesive twill. can certainly lay that down on your uh, cutting mat, on your craft cutter, or into your uh, laser bed, cut that, and then uh, you need to mask it to hold your design together to be able to heat apply. So yeah, lots of education that we can do on twill. We'll make a note to start doing some more of that. All right. Let's see. All right, so let me uh, 
let me show a couple other uh, projects here. There's some good questions coming, but I want to make sure I hit some of these other projects. Uh, this was just shared before I came on air. So I wanted to, to pull this up. Um, I love this because this is uh, thermofilm and thermofilm is the number one product it's still used for sports. And I'm just happy to see some sports uniforms being decorated uh, with where we're at right now. And you can see just a traditional uh, two color design. So uh, yes, the lightweight, no feel heat transfer vinyls are best. Um, for uh, t-shirts and performance wear and those sorts of things. But if you need something tough for contact sports or even just an economy product uh, where you can buy uh, for decorating little league uniforms or what, whatever it might be, thermofilm comes in such a way where you can buy the loose numbers and layer those together and then cut your names uh, out. Or you can buy it by the roll and cut everything yourself. So I wanted to show that work. I thought it was uh, a really cool use of a product. If you haven't tried thermofilm, it's um, a little glossier, a little more leather looking, uh, but it's it's a little thicker. Uh, it's definitely tougher and highly durable. A couple other photos. Um, goof proof, which we talked about earlier, one of our plastisol transfer options from Transfer Express onto face uh, covers. And we're getting a lot of um, a lot of growth and seeing a lot of growth even in our uh, web stores that we help you build, which is spiritsale.com. Uh, with face covers and seeing a lot of success there. And so that we're about at the midway point, I'm gonna get back to questions, but that will kind of transition me nice to uh, the job that I'm working on uh, for my uh, daughter's school, which is what I wanted to show you here today. So I'm just gonna turn you slightly today and we will talk through this. So um, there's face covers, right? And then there's a lot of choices out there. And then there are um, neck gaiters. And this particular uh, gaiter was sourced, it's the Badger brand. Um, it's thin, has some stretch to it, right? And it's clearly a polyester, 100% polyester fabric because one, it uh, needs to expand um, over the face and have a little bit of that stretch to it. So you typically see 100% polyester, maybe some lycra, maybe some spandex in these uh, gaiters. And so one of the questions we commonly get, like decorating a cotton face cover, uh, pretty easy. There's a lot of different products you can use, but when it comes to decorating these gaiters, they're a little bit more technical in nature. So you do see a lot of folks uh, fully sublimating these just to go back with, so it's completely breathable and you get that zero feel um, element to it. So the air can pass through without issues. Uh, but the reality is this goes clear around the neck. This is a youth size. And so there's going to be parts of these gaiters that are on the back or on the side of the face. So it does give you a lot of uh, latitude for being able to decorate certain locations. And so this particular job that, that I'm doing uh, for my daughter's school is about 150 of these, right? And I chose the Sublistop product. Uh, let me explain a couple reasons why. If you have a print cut machine, or even if you're gonna order uh, CAD prints transfers from us, this Sublistop product is one of our most technical and best products. Um, You'll see one thing right away, and I kept this on here. The backing of this product has a charcoal adhesive, so it's black, right? Um, that helps to block any dyes that may want to bleed from the polyester fabric that we're decorating. So these are manufactured inexpensively, presumably. And so there could be some unstable dyes in that fabric. It's not like it's a high-end cationic polyester that's not going to bleed, there could be some bleeding through. And so anytime you're decorating poly and there's a risk of bleeding, you wanna pick a product that can inhibit or block that dye migration, okay? Um, and so thermofilm is a good example of that, the product we showed on those sports uniforms that does that for you. But in this case, um, we needed a two-color design. And I know some of you are masters at uh, weeding detail, um, I would never imagine weeding detail and doing a two color design like this, or even a one color design with the Navy Gator showing through and having to weed that at that size. I think it's about a two and a quarter inch uh, on the size. So instead, what we did is we just created this two color graphic. I matched the uh, lion and the text uh, pretty close to the Gator color. So it could look like show through, but just be a, a badge, so to speak. Um, you'll notice that there is, whoop, tough to do this on camera, this area, right, which is designed as a block to be able to write the student's name in. Uh, in this case, the school is providing the students with the gator as a choice uh, to be able to, to wear into the school, right? Uh, when I say a choice, e either a gator or a mask for this particular school. Um, now, uh, I just wanna show you, basically, uh, usually 
if you had individual elements like my name, Josh, you would need to take a pressure sensitive mask on this after it's been print, printed, cut and weeded and lift it up so it all stays in registration so you can position and press. But because this is just one solid badge image, I'm just going to be able to peel this up. It's a circle, it's very easy, it stays together and save the cost and save the time in masking. And so I'm just going to take a second here and peel about four of these up. Again, this was printed on a uh, Roland Versacam. This particular one was uh, the SG2 300, which is one of the latest uh, Roland units that's sold by Stalls. And I'm just gonna grab all those together and then we're going to head over to the heat press to show you how to do these. So I just have these badges uh, separate. Let's lay them out on my desk. Um, now, one thing I hate doing is pressing one item at a time when I can do more. Uh, I, I have heard a lot of examples and I've done a video on this way early back in, I wanna say April or March. Um, if you have a hat press, a cat press, like a standard cat press, even the 360, it's a great option to be able to do the face covers, especially the ones with the center seams or the pleats or anything like that. But in this case, these items lay relatively uh, flat. There's only one small seam uh, going across the uh, back here. Um, you'll see, uh, and I use this as a guide, when I fold this, the seams on this edge, um, the Badger logo is designed to be on the side of the face. And so the seams in the back neck area, the Badger logo is on the side of the face, which leaves this front area open uh, for the front of the face for breathing. And so what I did is I dropped what's called a heat printing pillow onto my press because I want all of this seam structure, especially up by that logo, to sink down in because I'm going to cover this logo, right? I don't want two logos on it, so I'm just going to cover theirs up. I know that's kind of rude, but it is what it is, right? And this shows you another technique on how to decorate. So I have a whole stack of these over here, but I'm just going to lay out uh, four of them. I find four was really comfortable for me. And so I'll, I'll show you the pillow once I get it uh, all laid out so you can get a better look here. But I'm just going to lay these, uh, make sure my print area is up on the press and available to me. So here's what it looks like on the pillow, right? So you have all of that. And frankly, if you were doing this in high production, uh, you could have two pillows and you could be loading one pillow as a tray, moving it all onto the press, uh, et cetera. So you're not loading on the press. That's a way to eliminate downtime. Um, I'm gonna use a cover sheet. One, because this uh, screen printed logo is exposed directly to my heater. And also the next one I'm gonna do is gonna be exposed directly to my heater. And I'm just gonna preheat, and really that just helps me to get the items flat. At that point, I'm just gonna take my sublistop design and I'm going to position it um, and just cover that uh, Badger logo with the top edge. Uh, you do wanna be careful not to fold this over, which I did in haste here. Um, but if it folds over on itself, just it's a little bit like tacky to the texture, especially when it's hot in the room and it's pretty hot in here because I'm in a small room with the heat press on. And just position all those. And so very easy, not much to it, um, but can be a, you know, a great opportunity to just add some extra branding. In this case, they'll write the student's name with a permanent Sharpie, uh, which will stay on there on this material through the wash. Once they're all positioned, I'm gonna press it down for the, in this case, Sublistop normally takes five seconds, peel the mask in another five seconds. I'm just gonna run it straight for 10 to 12 seconds uh, because I don't have the mask uh, to worry about. And then I'll just remove the paper, the cover sheet, and I have a completed uh, gator that's branded and ready to go. So can be very quick, can be very easy. Once the adhesive uh, cools down on this, I'll stretch it to show you the performance. Uh, it's really not gonna need much flex, but I'll remember to stretch that to show you um, how that works. So just a concept, I know some of you are very hesitant to get into the uh, world of face covers and neck gaiters. I'll just tell you that um, it's really changing a lot of people's businesses. I've heard so many stories firsthand um, on the revenue that they're able to make, uh, not only to make up lost revenue uh, during this period while events and different things are closed, but really grow um, their client base over what they previously had because they're able to go out and offer this. And we have the best technology uh, to be able to print these. 
You don't need big screen printing presses. A heat press is phenomenal for doing this, especially when you think of the different options and how to fit multiples up and the low cost of heat transfers for small logos. So, all right, there's a couple more questions. I wanna make sure I get to my folks that pre-submitted questions to get the party started, because I always appreciate that. Um, and so let me bring up that the collection here. So somebody, uh, Chris asks, um, I have a dual fusion press, which is the Cadillac of heat presses. How do you reset the defaults? Um, so being able to change the presets. And so one thing about these presses and actually, if I can find it here, I grabbed a couple images from one of our videos where we show this. Sorry, bear with me for one second. And I'll walk you through a couple images. So our fusion in any, any machine in our fusion family has this touchscreen control board that allows you to preset, uh, pre to put presets into the machine, hundreds of presets and, and call them up that'll adjust your time, temperature. And on the, the manual, it'll do a pressure call out where you adjust your pressure. On the air press, it's awesome because it actually sets the pressure, okay? And so that's different than any other machine on the market. Um, when you compare to other air presses on the market, no other machine has the automatic pressure built into the preset where it just changes. Usually you have to grab a knob and turn it to adjust your air pressure in per application. So that's one way the dual air fusion is different. Now, when you get into your uh, presets, here's what I wanna show you. Let's look up at the top image. This is the main control board. I apologize, it's like on a video transition where I captured this from, but this little thing down in the bottom left, that's gonna be your preset menu. So you're gonna want to uh, select that Right, so that's the first thing you'll click with the stylus. And then underneath of that, you'll see all of your presettings um, that are set up. You'll see uh, whatever preset you have selected will have the little arrow and it'll be in bold. And so what you would wanna do is if you wanted to adjust fashion film, you click on fashion film with the stylus. And then if you look very close down in the bottom, uh, let me scroll down just a little bit here for you. Actually, I'll just bring the image up. You'll have this pencil. Uh, line when the item selected. So this pencil um, is basically your edit command. The plus means you wanna add a preset. The pencil means you want to edit what's selected. So if you click this pencil with your preset selected, um, it will go into the edit preset menu, which is over here on the right. That's where you can rename it. You can change the temperature on it. You can change the timer, uh, the pressure, anything you wanna change on it. Um, and not only do you, can you set one timer, um, on this, you can have four independent time settings. So if you had something that's preheat for two seconds, uh, apply for five seconds, peel the mask and apply for five seconds, you can set all of those up within the preset. So hopefully that answers your question, Chris. I wanna thank you for submitting that in advance. And I know you had a follow-up question to that, which is uh, when is the UltraWeed going to be added as a preset to the presses? Um, in an update. And that's something that we're working on is to add all of our new settings. I don't have a definitive timeline, uh, but we will definitely work to, uh, to update that. And with the Fusion IQ, you actually connect your machine to the cloud and we're working on an update that allows you to uh, pull down uh, new settings uh, into the machine uh, in time. Uh, one more question that was submitted in advance before I jump back into your live questions. Eddie um, asks, they just did a big order uh, a lig with elasti prints. The uniform looked amazing, but there is a tackiness uh, to the prints, uh, to the touch of the prints. Uh, we had to fold the uniform so they didn't stick together, follow directions to a T and wondering, is this normal? Because I have to do 173 parent shirts and was thinking about using ultra color to avoid this. And, and yes, Eddie, that's normal. The elasti prints um, definitely has more of a tack and a touch to it. So we've covered the gamut of plastisol transfers for that original uh, question that we had. Goofproof, standard transfer, doesn't have any tack level to it, great for t-shirts. Elasti prints that we're talking about here is great for team uniforms and performance wear, but it does have a little bit more of a grip uh, to the face of it. I'd call it more of an athletic feel. So has a tackiness, that's normal, uh, won't impact durability or whatever, but you do wanna be careful, especially in the hot conditions right off the press that you don't fold, fold the print uh, against itself. Um, and then ultra color would be a good choice um, for the parent shirts if you want something that's a little softer and smoother uh, to the touch, uh, but, but either should work. All right, so got some more questions. Yeah, so Mike, congratulations. Just printed a hundred face masks that a client gave me to print on. Um, yep, glad the tip to print multiples. 
uh, has has helped you. And uh, it's my pleasure to give guidance over the years. Uh, this is uh, my favorite uh, part of the job is to help you all grow in your business and do video content and educate. And I know that's uh, one of Jenna's favorite parts as well. Um, yeah, and so this is uh, worth noting. Dane Clement has some fantastic designs for masks on his new website. Just got some a couple days ago. Uh, let me see if I can pull that up real quick and I'll show you uh, those. We're live here so we can do whatever we want. So Dane is uh, part of the group stall companies and I'll show you because he got them right on the front page. His website is just daneclement.com and you can see he has stock face mask designs. So if there's something uh, that you want to do, you can actually download uh, these designs. You can buy the, the packs, right? And you can um, use those. So just click shop now. It will get you into all the different styles that you can do. And the really cool thing about this is you can print these yourself on your own sublimation printer, or you can upload them to stalls and we print the sublimation transfer for you. It shows you the face mask styles that it's available in. And when you click on it, you'll see all the different uh, kits, right? Depending on what you want to buy, uh, you'll have all the different options to be able to take advantage of pop culture and then just basic uh, things. But lots of cool designs there uh, to feed your creativity. Now, to, so maybe you start with this design, right? You sublimate it onto your face mask. Another question is, what product can you use on top of that to add a little bit of personalization? And uh, we do have a heat transfer vinyl called Silicone Dye Block that does a great job with fully sublimated designs. So you could certainly use like um, a darker color heat transfer vinyl if it's going on a lighter color like this emoji pack. Uh, if you did this emoji design that's in yellow, I could certainly use black heat transfer vinyl. It would, it would never show through because the transfer decoration is darker than the print but where you really get into an issue is if you're doing like i don't know let's just say the shark designs and you want to drop white on it because that's going to show up that's going to bleed through if it's sublimated so that's where you would use a product like silicone dye block uh, to be able to help you um, doo -doo 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 -doo. all right so we got some good uh questions come in here. I'm just going to try to grab. I don't know. I'm not sure what this is referencing, Mike, but yeah, I use CADWorks for everything. So <laughs> if it was something I did, you can guess that it uh, came from CADWorks. Uh, I think I put her name uh, on a mask uh, in our rose gold uh, premium plus or fashion film, either one. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, you're asking about the one I just showed for the school. Okay, now I got it. So this is, uh, yes, created in CADWorks. Um, and so we just brought in uh, the clip art. I just did a circle text and put a circle around it. Yeah, certainly created in CADWorks. And just to show you guys the stretch and recovery of this, um, you get lots of flexibility with it. Um, it's designed for performance wear. So pick something with high stretch and recovery if you're doing the gaiters. Uh, specifically. Um, is there a trick to decorating gaiters with sublimation to keep them from stretching? I'd, I'd say lay flat um, for sure. So I wouldn't thread these ever if I were sublimating on them. I would just lay them flat and decorate. And then typically when it stretches, you're going to um, still see the image. You shouldn't see any white because it'll completely dye the fabric. Um, if you're sublimating these, a lot of times people will do uh, the full panel on one side and then they'll flip it over and they'll do the full panel on the other side. It's very similar to a video that Jenna recently did where she was sublimating a leopard print, I believe it was. It's on our Stalls TV channel onto a a uh, can cooler or a can koozie. So I would treat this in a similar fashion. I do know some people have dialed it in to where they use top and bottom heat and actually put both sides on the gator at once to sublimate both sides at one time. Um, not much different than when you're doing an all over sublimated shirt. Um, it's just now we're able to work on a smaller heat press instead of one of those grand format uh, presses. Um, neck gators are single layer. Are there double layer ones? Uh, Good question. I know there's a lot of different options and suppliers out there. I know there was recently a study uh, done by 
Duke University that generated quite a bit of controversy on the Gators and the effectiveness of the Gators. Um, the company Vapor Apparel does a really nice job. Um, Chris that that owns that company is out there in the industry and uh, basically that study took a, a very one Gator right and gave it a uh, a comparison and then the news reported onto it on it in a not so accurate way. Um, so they're def like anything, there's different quality of t-shirts, there's different quality of gators. Uh, Vapor Apparel is one place you can look to see some different options that are out there that are higher end and, and higher quality as well. All right, uh, I like this. So had my demo for Spirit Sale. Yes, something we do is one-on-one -on -one demos. Let me know when that ship station integration is done and I'm sold. We sure will, it's something we're working on uh, to make it easier to ship products. Um, here's a good question. Andreas asks, how do I avoid scorch marks on polyester? And so polyester, I'm going to turn this off. It's getting a little warm here on my back. Um, polyester is uh, notoriously challenging for uh, scorching. So there is a whole lot of different ways to get rid of the scorch mark. It all starts with time, temperature, and pressure. One of those elements, of course, is causing your particular polyester to scorch that your heat press is delivering. Either there's too much time, too much temperature, or too much pressure, and the goal is to reduce all of them as much as possible to get rid of that scorch mark. And so there's a couple ways you can go about that. Uh, first and foremost, you need to source a low temp heat transfer product to reduce the risk of scorching. If you're trying to apply polyester at 340 degrees, 320 degrees even, uh, with some of the polyesters, you're gonna get scorching and there's no way to get around it. Um, that's why there are products on both the Transfer Express side of the business and the stall side of the business that apply at 300 degrees or less. Um, the Ultra Weed product that we've been talking about applies at 260 degrees. The Ultra Colors, 275 degrees, just to give you an idea. So step one, source um, a book of heat transfer products that apply a low temp if you're gonna make poly a big part of your business. Step number two is pressure. If it's not temperature, usually I find pressure is the biggest reason for scorching polyester. More pressure is not better, certainly when applying uh, lightweight poly fabric, so make sure you have accurate pressure. Um, one of the biggest issues I see, and I've, I've reported on it many times in my videos, is when you go from a large platen surface like we have here, a 16 by 20, to a very small surface, typically done by inserting a, a mouse pad, a print perfect pad, even a pillow or a platen. And so basically you get all that pressure coming from the top of the press down onto a very small area. And so 40 PSI or a four on the heat press ends up being way more than what you expected. So you see a lot of scorching in those areas. So make sure you cut back your pressure when you're going to a smaller platen or a smaller print area. All right, so those would be uh, two big things. Some polys are still gonna scorch with a low temperature with a very light pressure. And so some of it comes to your sourcing ability and being able to source fabrics and, and garments that are going to be a little less heat sensitive. But if those don't solve it, uh, we do have something called a heated lower platen. Uh, we call it a power platen, which basically means you're heating from underneath as well as on top. And really that's the core of what we've built in the 360 IQ hat press. Hats were one of the most challenging things because they contain, a lot of them that are popular, contain either 100% poly, whether it's a foam trucker or uh, the performance caps uh, for golf and whatnot, or acrylic uh, for your flat build caps and a lot of the styles you see out there. And so those scorch a lot. So we've built this heat uh, coming from underneath that allows you to press it uh, a lower temperature on top, hotter underneath. So if you're getting any marking, it's on the inside of the item. So you can also buy those heated lower platens and power platens for your heat press uh, if you have a stalls machine. The only one that they don't work with is the standard fusion because of the drawer feature. Every other stalls machine, you can buy those heated lower attachments, uh, which frankly even help with applying dimensional logos, leather patches, et cetera, which is something uh, that is trending. So hopefully that helps you. Easy, easy question and answer here. The answer is yes. You can certainly use the permatwill with your Melco embroidery machine. Great combination. All right, let's see. Sorry, I'm scrolling through. All right, I think uh, I picked up Ricardo's question about scorching, so we should be good there. All right, this is bad. Debbie, call Hotronics, 1-800-727-8520, um, and they'll take care of you. I'm sure you're not the first person that uh, that had an issue. 
Um, and we do sell sublimated transfers at stalls, uh, stalls.com. The, I guess the best kept secret on the site, and I'll show it to you real quick. Unlock so much potential for your business is right here. It's the artwork uploader. So if you want us to make something for you up in the top right hand side of the screen, click on this artwork uploader. Uh, you will have to be logged in, but you can uh, upload designs and that uh, artwork uploader will allow you to order sublimation transfers, the CAD prints transfers like we talked about. Uh, if you want us to cut the glitter material for you because you don't like weeding it, we can do that. Uh, the dimensional transfers like flex style, uh, 3D embroidered patches, the leather patches. Uh, if you haven't spent the time to learn about that artwork uploader, it's such a critical part uh, for our customers that just don't have the time to cut weed and make everything themselves. You can still make great money uh, just heat pressing and let us do that work for you. All right. And uh, again, daneclement.com is the website that you want to go to uh, for that, uh, for all those uh, sublimated graphics uh, that we talked about for the face masks. Um, and if you're getting the platen print on your tees and masks, um, hopefully some of those instructions I just gave will help you about reducing the scorch mark. Um, sometimes you just get what I call the ironing mark, right? Where the shirt falls off of the edge of the press and you get the crease. If you're, if you're printing something that can be pressed with the pillow, this soft edge of the pillow helps to prevent that. But keep in mind, you do not want to use the pillow with screen printed transfers. It works fine with heat transfer vinyl and things that, uh, they require like a medium pressure or less like our print cut uh, material or CAD prints material. Um, and I think we're talking about Transfer Express here. So uh, I wanna make sure to cover this. We are fixing this. We've heard you loud and clear and we are fixing this more information uh, soon uh, for that. Thank you for your feedback, everybody on that. Um, and if you're having difficulty cutting your ultra weed, so I've heard this, uh, more than a handful of times, and it almost always comes back to the same uh, issue. So let's cover that now. Um, Ultra Weed, our newest heat transfer vinyl, is super thin, um, and it has, I'd say, a little grippier texture to the backing of it. Um, it's sold 15 inches wide. Um, most cutting issues that I've seen from being inside of shops or talking to people at Trade Joe's is usually their blade is out uh, way too far. Um, or they have way too much pressure. These materials like ultra weed are only like 80 or 90 microns thick, which is extremely thin. And so um, use a sharp blade, number one, if you're using the same blade that you use to cut your glitter and reflective and flock and everything else, um, I'd recommend you dedicate a blade to just your standard thin film so you get better cutting and performance. It'll be more than worth the money. Um, in time, you'll save weeding and frustration and wasted vinyl. So let's start there. Dedicate a blade and a blade holder to your thinner films, uh, whatever that film is. Um, and then make sure you have barely any blade sticking out. Um, let's see. I have my cutter over here. So let me grab it. Grab the blade. See if we can get a good visual of this. Yeah, you're probably not going to be able to see. That's because there's like no blade sticking out. So it's tough to see, I know. But... Like there's actually a blade in there, believe it or not. And I could see it to the human eye here, um, but it's it's just barely sticking out. It really should be the thickness of your film. Um, so imagine how thin that is. It's even thinner than half of a credit card's thickness when, when ultra weed. So if you can visually see the blade at arm's length, uh, you're probably out too far just for perspective. So blade barely sticking out. And where we've noticed issues is, is if people are cutting, you know, say, 90 grams of downforce or higher. Uh, typically ultra weed with a fresh blade, you're gonna be somewhere around that 70, 80 mark. So I feel pretty confident that if you reduce the downforce and your blade extension, you're gonna have better success. If not, make sure you call us and we'll get you taken care of. A um, Couple more questions I wanna make sure I cover. We got about five more minutes together. Uh, Ronald, welcome. Thanks for watching from Trinidad. Um, using Instaprint material, 300 degrees, 10 seconds, 60 PSI, still getting scorch marks. Um, 60 PSI seems to be a heavy pressure um, and 300 degrees may be hotter uh, than, than what you need. So if you go into our super tech line of products, which is similar to the sublistop I talked to you about today, you can go 280 degrees for as little as five seconds uh, with this and you only need 40 PSI on the pressure. So if you want to try with Instaprint, try reducing your pressure first and see if you can have a better result 
Uh, if you're going on to 100% polyester, the secret is most heat transfer vinyls can actually apply at a lesser temp than what's stated on 100% poly. We do those settings so you can do the same on cotton and poly, but the reality is adhesives tend to pair better with polyester, so you can almost always drop your temperature 10, 15 degrees, but make sure you test it with your settings. And hey, Brian, glad you're doing good with your uh, SG540, which is a print cut machine uh, that you bought out there in Atlantic City. Um, man, I wish I could get back to Atlantic City. I miss, missed that show this year. It's one of my favorite, along with the Long Beach show of the year. Um, I can't wait to get back out there in front of you guys and shaking hands and giving hugs or just talking about business. That's the fun part of the job. All right. Um, and Mike, no, I did not forget the calculator uh, Canadian version. Um, I've actually passed that to our folks at Stalls Canada so they can do the um, translation of the, the uh, numbers for me. Um, however, I'll make you a deal, Mike. I will give you the unlocked version of the formulas, which counts you on the list of special if you'll do those conversions um, uh, for me. Um, but I, I know our team up there is working on it. It's been way too long, so we'll make sure to follow up on that. Just so you guys know, I never avoid a question, even when it's bad. That's how we stay real and authentic here. All right, let's see. Got time for a few more questions. Trying to scroll back through to see if I missed anybody. Hey, Patrice, how are you today? Thanks for watching. Uh, Valdez says, uh, doubled sales just because my job start ordering more shirts for me. My market is family reunion. So yeah, um, groups and gatherings are, are tough right now. Um, I guess the advantage of family reunions is sometimes they can be smaller and sometimes they can be uh, outside. So that's a, not a, a bad market. Right now we see people in sports are really uh, struggling to reinvent themselves and we need to be thinking about uh, back to school differently, which is upon us. Um, right now we actually need to be thinking into holiday uh, differently in gift giving. I think there's going to be a huge opportunity this year for uh, gift giving, especially on the corporate side of the market, uh, because I think uh, employers are going to want to invest more into uh, their employees and gifts this season. Um, so start thinking about how you can capitalize on that through creating uh, corporate gifts and whatnot. And I know we're going to have a, uh, a session coming up on that in the coming months. All right. <laughs> so, uh, you got me laughing on this. So these are these are tied together. So a lot of people don't know, but yes, Bob is my uncle. Brian figured out the Atlantic City show. I'm guessing we both talked to you about the printer cutter because Bob's always working the machine. Um, I have to tell him though, if he, in case he's not watching, he probably isn't, that uh, you actually said I sold you the machine and not Bob, which speaks to, uh, um, I'll say, I'll jab out of my closing skills over Uncle Bob's. But yes, uh, this is a uh, family-based business in, in Michigan, certainly, with the uh, Stalls family. And here in Pennsylvania, we have um, a couple relatives as well. As you guys know, my brother works for the company as well as my uncle. And if you want to become a vinyl reseller, uh, good question. Let me pull that up on the website. It's very easy to get to. So if you go into on stalls.com, go to CAD Cut Direct, and click on this link, become a reseller. Um, if we don't have a reseller in your region, uh, this is a really nice opportunity. You can read more about our CAD Cut Reseller Network, where basically we make uh, our vinyl available in local communities. And you can see um, all of the details about that and get a picture of what being a CAD Cut reseller looks like. If you have a brick and mortar uh, location, there's an application right here. And we wanna make sure you're serious about representing the brand and you can apply uh, to be a CAD Cut reseller. And believe it or not, Uncle Bob uh, manages that network here, along with uh, Jody, as well as uh, Brenda, who who are great as far as supporting our resellers, and they will reach out to you and uh, see if it's a good fit for you. All right, so everybody loves Uncle Bob, so we got we got a fan club here, right? All right, so I want to thank you all for attending this live session. We're coming up on our time here. As always, if you have more questions, I think I've gotten to the majority of them. Uh, make sure you ask those in our Heat Press for Profit Facebook group. Uh, myself, Jenna, Kelly, uh, Danielle, our other educators and team members are always looking in there, uh, looking to help you. And more often than not, you guys answer your own questions and collaborate and share advice, which is awesome to see. So thanks for watching. Hope you have a great rest of the week. I'll be broadcasting live to you again uh, Thursday of this week, same time, 11 a.m. Eastern. Have a great day.